Good morning. For order of service, announcements, and indeed resource details, go as always to the webpage www.firstlearn.org.uk. Uh, there is so much to inform you and to share with others. Let me just uh, say that if you're a, a UCB Word for Today user, and you haven't yet got your copy for August, September, October, or indeed you would like additional copies or you would like to start using it, contact me and we will get you those copies. Uh, towards the end of this month, we plan to distribute a special edition of Bridge News featuring details about the reopening of the meeting house for morning services beginning on Sunday the 6th of September. And that special edition of Bridge News will have other relevant information. Uh, the, the online announcements have some details also. But let me mention briefly three things. First of all, a reminder to organisation secretaries to get their updates for that edition of Bridge News to me or to Michael Bailey by tomorrow. And secondly, Respond, if you can, to the call for stewards. Uh, we, need, we need stewards as we open uh, safely and well. And thanks to those who have already answered the call, but it would greatly help planning if others signed up and uh, did that soon. And then thirdly, uh, the special edition of Bridge News will explain and reassure in more detail about the, the reopening. But let me give you a whistle-stop tour of how things will probably look on the 6th of September. It'll be really helpful, uh, for instance, to have an idea of the numbers likely to attend. And so we'll be encouraging each household to phone or to email ahead of time just a few days beforehand to the church office, indicating how many are coming from their household, be it one or be it 10. And when you arrive, you'll be shown to your seat. There will be music, but normal singing will be unlikely, at least for the first few Sundays. The service will be for everyone, from the youngest to the oldest, as the babies, the toddlers, the children, and the young people will stay with their families throughout the service. And even though it'll be a shorter service than usual, all the key elements of a service in the Presbyterian and Reformed tradition will be there. High quality live streaming of our services will continue, as will the recordings available on CDs and the dial-up service those who can't attend will very definitely not be left out. Yes, it, well, it will be different, but it will be worship. And we're here to worship God, to build up his church and to share his love. Today's service has the theme of a time for dancing. There's always been a time for dancing. Dancing is a truly worldwide phenomenon. All cultures have dances which are part of their heritage. We have been dancing since time immemorial. I just have to mention one word, strictly. And immediately you're thinking of dancing, that, that mixture of competition and showbiz, I know has got many of you hooked. Today should have been the closing ceremony of the 2020 Olympics, celebrating a range of sporting competitions, 339 events in 33 sports, including six new sports, sport climbing, surfing, skateboarding, karate, baseball, and softball. 
ballroom dancing or dance sport, as it was to be called, made a bid to be included, but didn't just quite make it. But if you want to start training for the Paris Olympics 2024, I've heard rumours that breakdancing might be included. Some of us might even remember that night in 1994 when the Eurovision Song Contest was being broadcast from the Point Theatre Dublin. And during the interval, a phenomenon was born, river dance. That certainly put Irish dancing on the map. On the 21st of July 2013, 1,693 dancers from 44 countries lined up across a bridge, uh, the, uh, across the Liffey, and they entered the record books by dancing one of the river dance dances. Now, I don't think I could have been one of that troupe of dancers. It, it, it's not my style. However, a few years earlier, on the 31st of December 2008, well, that probably was more my style because 40,148 dancers did the largest ever YMCA dance. Now, of course, it was done in Texas. But of course, dancing, dancing isn't always a fun thing. It can be a really serious business and can be really difficult. I, I, I love the tribute written by an LA cartoonist about Fred Astaire's dance partner, Ginger Rogers. Sure, he said, Fred Astaire was great, but don't forget Ginger Rogers did everything he did backwards and in high heels. Let me ask a question. What, what is your dance? What, what dance would best fit with your personality? Might it be graceful? like ballet? Might it be energetic, like jive or zumba? Or maybe you're, you're more into fitting in with everyone else, like line dancing. Or for a bit of fun, you might want to think about what dance most closely fits members of your family or your friends. That should get you thinking. I am assured by the experts in dancing that whether the dancing is stylized or improvised, whether it's Nureyev or dad dancing, it expresses the dancer's personal response to the music and reveals something about the dancer. Now, if you've seen me dancing, I'm not quite sure what it says. But whether the experts are right or not, dancing is an emotional thing. It, it, it connects with, with our emotions. And the principal emotions expressed through dancing are joy and love. Yes, a time, a time for dancing there may be. But who is dancing? And why? What have they got? to dance about. Later in the service, our scripture reading reveals a surprise we may not have been expecting. But as we continue this service, let us pause in prayer. Let us pray. We thank you, Lord, most holy, for the place of worship in our lives, the time set aside for prayer and reflection, when we can turn from our own narrow self-concern to what is greater than ourselves. For your being is beyond our thinking and your glory is beyond our imagining. But your love is, is always closer than our feeling and the riches of your spirit are always within our reaching. Without this access to the, the treasuries of heaven, how poor our lives would be, how wasted in their fruitlessness, without this sweet refreshment from above. 
It is with parched and fainting souls we bring our empty vessels to the spring of your eternal love. Lord, calm our stressed and anxious minds, if that's how we are. Those minds which fret in busyness with many things. Teach us in these moments to wait on you in quietness. Forgive the dullness of our understanding and our hesitant response to your good will. Move us with the sound of sacred music. Warm us with the company of your people, even in this virtual time. Inspire us with the truth of faith's enduring story. But mostly, fill us with your very self, that on the day of reckoning, we shall have more to offer you than words and rituals and vain achievements. Teach us who meet even in this virtual space to make our daily lives places of worship until the whole wide world becomes your holy temple in which all things gladly praise your name. And so, as your connected and gathered people, we continue to pray together. Just as when Christ gathered his friends together and taught them to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now, I know some of you uh, thoroughly enjoyed this week's Wonder Zone videos from Scripture Union Scotland. And thanks to Catherine for posting them on Facebook each day. So much to learn about God's world and our place in his world. I even tried uh, a few of the experiments. Now, I loved this particular one. Bear with me for a second, because it involves some fizzy drink. I, I think it can probably be uh, any variety of fizzy drink of, of this type. Whoa, there we go. Yeah, that was exciting, but there's more to come, because part of the experiment involved dropping these sweets into the Coke. Let's see what happens when we drop them in. Whoa. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that, that was spectacular. I hope you agree. Yeah, we've got Coke all over the place now. <laughs> Don't worry, it'll get cleaned up. Don't worry. You can still watch uh, the, 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 the Wonder Zone videos uh, and there's plenty more exciting experiments that actually teach us not just about uh, science, but also about God's Word and about what God's Word says about our place in His Word. Well, during these last few months, when we have been in these very unusual times, uh, the, the BB throughout the British Isles has been providing some great resources for leaders, uh, for boys, for young men including devotionals, thoughts for the day, really. And this one by Adrian Ward caught my imagination and attention a few weeks ago. You want to see what this guy can do with a skipping rope. Over to Adrian. Hey guys, how are we doing? Good to see you. Uh, thanks for inviting me to come back again. Do you know, when I was a little lad, um, my parents gave me a skipping rope, lovely skipping rope as a present, 
and uh, and I used to use it. You see, I used to use it as a multitude of things. It wasn't just a skipping rope. I used to use it to uh, pretend I was a spaceship because I loved Star Wars. You see, and I'd be in the Millennium Falcon and I'd be flying around and all this kind of stuff and using it. And then sometimes I really liked the cowboy movies. Loved the cowboy movies. And so sometimes what I'd do is I'd make a lasso out of it and then I'd swing it around like this and I'd catch the cat. Now, of course because there, there weren't any cattle where I lived, you see, on our housing estate. And then sometimes what I did, by the way, if you have a skipping rope, don't cut it in half like this. That's probably not the best thing to do. And your parents won't be best pleased. But also what I used to do was I used to have a superhero friend. And the superhero that I liked was X-Ray Spec Man. Now, not many people have heard of X-Ray Spec Man. Most people will go with maybe some of the Guardians of the Galaxy people or Avengers and things like that. But I used to have X-Ray Spec Man and I could see through walls and I could rescue people and things like that. And then sometimes what I used to do was when I found someone I needed to rescue, I would cut the rope again like this. I'd trim off the knots just like this because then I could use those knots to scale great heights like my stairs and things like that and when I scaled those heights I could rescue people you see I could rescue them because I could use the knots to climb all the way to the top of the stairs but then I thought about this as well actually and when we're born we have a relationship with God and God wants a relationship with us and actually usually there's a wonderful link between us and God and in our lives, we may decide that we want to go off our own way, do our own thing. And we then say, God, please forgive us. And so when he comes back, he forgives us. And the, and the rope is restored. But the great thing about forgiveness and grace, in the Bible it talks about we are saved by grace, is that when we have a relationship with God, the great thing about it is he doesn't remember our sins anymore. In fact, they are all forgiven and we are back to having a perfect relationship with God. Isn't that amazing? So I really hope that you're able to have a really good relationship with God. And if there's things that you're uncomfortable about or things that you think you need to say sorry to God about, why don't you do it? Just between you and him uh, in a quiet space because you know he's really forgiving and he loves you. He loves you more than you can possibly imagine. Have an amazing week, guys. Incredible, don't you think? Well, Adrian was sharing with us about the, the relationship we can have with God. For instance, how we can pray. What did, what did you get from, you know, from Adrian's chat, Adrian's talk? Well, the big takeaway for me was what he said about how God loves us. The grace of God is amazing. So remember it and celebrate it as we sing amazing grace. But this version has a few sign language prompts. And after the hymn, Will has something to say and then leads us in prayer. We're going to sing a song that you will know, but we've added a little chorus and I will teach you the actions, the signs for that first, and then I'll teach you the melody. So it goes like this. I will not fear, for you are with me. I'll trust in your amazing, and then grace is like this, grace to your heart. Okay, right, and the tune goes like this.
holidays continue, we ask that you continue to look after everyone and to keep our church family safe. We have missed having our holiday Bible club this year and meeting with all of our friends but thank you for under zone online this week thank you for all of our key workers who continue to care for us and help to feed us during these difficult times. Amen. In the Bible, there is time for dancing, and it's usually associated with the worship of God. The first time dancing is mentioned in the Bible is when Miriam, Moses' sister, leads the woman in a, a celebratory dance, probably what's called a makola, which would be a sort of a circle dance. This is after the children of Israel have safely and miraculously been delivered through the crossing of the Red Sea. Exodus 15, verse 20. Then Miriam the prophet, Aaron's sister, took a tambourine in her hand, and all the women followed her with tambourines and dancing. But there are many more other occasions with dancing, such as after military victories. I read this verse from 1 Samuel 18. It's verse 6. When the men were returning home after David had killed the Philistine, that is Goliath, 
the women came out from all the towns of Israel to meet King Saul with singing and dancing, with joyful songs and with tambourines and lyres. As they danced, they sang, Saul has slain his thousands and David his tens of thousands. A bit of an awkward moment there. Religious festivals called for dancing. Let me read this rather peculiar passage from Judges 21, it's verses 19 to 21. And it reads, But look, there is the annual festival of the Lord in Shiloh, which lies north of Bethel, east of the road that goes from Bethel to Shechem and south of Labona. So they instructed the Benjamites, saying, Go and hide in the vineyards and watch. When the young women of Shiloh come out to join in the dancing, rush from the vineyards, and each of you sees one of them to be your wife, then return to the land of Benjamin. Well, now that, that whole story, it was a bit of a mess they'd, they'd got themselves into. And I mention it only because there's dancing, not a, a, as a, a matchmaking technique. But note that these examples I've quoted are of women dancing, but men could dance also. There is that famous, or maybe I should say infamous, episode when David did some dancing that some did not approve of. 2 Samuel 6 verse 14, wearing a linen ephod, David was dancing before the Lord with all his might, while he and all Israel were bringing up the ark of the Lord with shouts and the sound of trumpets. As the ark of the Lord was entering the city of David, Michal, daughter of Saul, watched from a window. And when she saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord, she despised him in her heart. And some of these examples, the, the dancing isn't exactly applauded. But of course, you'll be aware of the dancing that is lauded, approved, and, uh, and with very definite religious significance, particularly in the Psalms, Psalm 149, verse 3. Let them praise his name with dancing and make music with tambourine and harp. And the exuberance of Psalm 150 is unmistakable. Praise the Lord, praise God in his sanctuary, praise him in his mighty heavens, praise him for his acts of power, praise him for his surpassing greatness, praise him with the sounding of the trumpet, praise him with the harp and lyre, praise him with tambourine and dancing, praise him with the strings and, and pipe, Praise him with a clash of cymbals. Praise him with resounding cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Well, you've maybe noticed these examples have all been from the Old Testament. But of course, there, there was dancing referred to in the New Testament in rather favorable terms. Uh, we, we recently looked at the, uh, the story of the lost son, the, the story of the, the prodigal son. And verse 25 of Luke 15 reads, Meanwhile, the elder son was in the field. When he came near the house, he heard music and dancing. So you could say, if you did a survey of dancing in the Bible, that there's a bit of a mixed bag when the Bible mentions dancing. It's certainly not good when, for instance, not long after Miriam has led her dance celebrating that deliverance in Exodus, that Moses, as he's coming down from the mountain, having met with the Lord and with the two stone tablets, is greeted with a scene of idolatry and revelry around the golden calf. Exodus 32, verse 19, when Moses approached the camp and saw the calf and the dancing, his anger burned and he threw the tablets out of his hands, breaking them to pieces at the foot of the mountain. Oh yes, 
dancing can be used to worship false and abominable idols or for degraded purposes. I suppose classic example is in the New Testament in Mark chapter 6, reading from verse 21. Finally, the opportune time came. On his birthday, Herod gave a banquet for his high officials and military commanders and the leading men of Galilee. When the daughter of Herodias came in and danced, she pleased Herod and his dinner guests. The king said to the girl, ask me for anything you want and I'll give it to you. But of course, as a consequence of the dancing and Herod's rash promise, John the Baptist was beheaded. So even though in the wisdom literature of Ecclesiastes 3 verse 4, there may be an endorsement of dance, uh, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance. It's not all plain sailing. But all these examples I've cited are of people dancing one way or another. But in the Bible, they are not the only dancers. Let's, let's now turn to the book of the prophet Zephaniah. Now, there's something you don't hear often. And be honest, who can find Zephaniah in the Bible without looking up the index? Zephaniah was one of the, the 12 so-called minor prophets. He was a contemporary of of Jeremiah and Habakkuk. He, he was indeed Judah's first prophet for 70 years since Isaiah, probably from an aristocratic family and maybe a descendant of King Hezekiah. Not a, not a bad pedigree. Working from Jerusalem, he was a good influence during the early days of King Josiah. The, the boy who became king at the tender age of eight. Yes, Zephaniah spoke of judgment and also blessing. He called for repentance and promised healing and hope. He proclaimed the day of the Lord, not a 24-hour period, but an era of time when wrong would be righted, righteousness vindicated and wickedness punished. It was a day for settling accounts. And the final part of his message is about the day of hope. And he says something really important about dancing and who does the dancing. Yvonne now reads for us. The reading this morning is from the Old Testament, the book of Zephaniah, chapter 3, and beginning to read at verse 14. Sing, O daughter of Zion, shout aloud, O Israel. Be glad and rejoice with all your heart, O daughter of Jerusalem. The Lord has taken away your punishment. He has turned back your enemy. The Lord, the King of Israel, is with you. Never again will you fear any harm. On that day, they will say to Jerusalem, Do not fear, O Zion. Do not let your hands hang limp. The Lord your God is with you. He is mighty to save. He will take great delight in you. He will quiet you with his love. He will rejoice over you with singing. Amen. This Saturday, Jacqueline McCallum will become Jacqueline Murphy. Uh, we wish Jackson Paul well for their wedding, even though there will not be the dancing they, they might have originally planned for. As we wish for them every blessing, we share the words of this wedding hymn, wrapped up and presented in a traditional Irish tune.
When people of my generation think of dancing, we can't help but remember the late Roy Castle, OBE, who was also a singer, actor, comedian, TV presenter, and a multi-talented musician, recognized as an accomplished jazz trumpeter, although a few other instruments were no trouble to him either. His high energy, spectacular tap dancing represented his joyful, resilient approach to life, which became most obvious when he was at his weakest physically, as he lived through the, the darkest moments of a cancer diagnosis. His courage and zest for life derived from his Christian faith influenced many. Now, I don't think there was dancing at his funeral, but he had requested a jazz band to play at the funeral. He wanted joyful thankfulness to God to be in the air on that day. Now, I guess there were some people found Roy Castle's funeral service, challenged their preconceptions about what a funeral service should be like. And I'm also pretty sure our reading today from Zephaniah poses a challenge to the preconceptions many of us have about God. Is it not the case that most of us think of God the Father as this older, white-haired, bearded figure in white robes, sitting on a throne, looking down on us. However, our reading gives a very different picture indeed. Now, admittedly, the, the, cue, uh, the clue is not immediately obvious and, and needs a bit of digging. So let me refer you to to Zephaniah 3, verse 17, and in particular the last few words. The verse goes, The Lord your God is with you, the mighty warrior who saves. He will take great delight in you. In his love he will no longer rebuke you, but will rejoice over you with singing. Now in the original Hebrew, the word translated in our version as he will rejoice over you is actually about rejoicing by, by springing and leaping. In other words, by dancing. So let me read the last sentence of verse 17 using this sense of the original Hebrew. He will take great delight in you. In his love he will no longer rebuke you, but will dance with shouts of joy over you as on a day of festival. Well, do you get this remarkable image? The spectacular truth about God's love for you. Zephaniah's people had been living through some tough times and needed a shake-up and a, a wake-up call. God loves us through our difficulties. And when we come out the other end, God rejoices with us, or as Zephaniah has it, he dances over us and shouts for us. The God of the universe takes great delight in our seemingly insignificant lives and dances with joy for us, whoever you are. Let me tell you Adrian's story, except it's not only Adrian's story, and you'll understand what I mean in a minute. It's taken from a little book published by the London Institute for Contemporary Christianity entitled The One About. It's a book by Mark Green, their, their director. And this is the one about the boy unmentioned. I'm, I'm reading from the book now. Adrian has retired from full-time teaching, but until Easter there, had been doing some supply work in secondary schools. 
Like many a teacher, when he has set the pupils some work, he often walks up and down the, the class, pausing here and there at a desk. No doubt the pupils think he's glancing over their work, and no doubt sometimes he is. But often, Adrian is praying for them by name. It takes something to do that, doesn't it? To remember that, that God loves every one of these people, that God answers prayer, and to pray and trust him for the answers, even though Adrian is very unlikely to see any difference himself or be able to tell anyone else that something amazing has happened. One day, like any other day, Adrian is in a class of 14-year-olds. He has set them some work and he's, he's walking up and down the class. He stops by one of the boys and begins to pray. And then he, as it were, hears God say this to him. No one has ever mentioned this boy's name to me before. Imagine that. No one has ever mentioned this boy's name to God before. No midwife, no health visitor, no parent, no uncle or aunt or grandparent, no sibling, no lollipop person, no doctor, no primary school teacher, no football coach or sweet shop owner or bus driver, no school friend, no one. But God was listening, waiting, it seems, alert at that moment to the fact that though there are 7.8 billion people on his planet, and no doubt hundreds of thousands of, of prayers being offered at that very moment, someone was at last lifting this particular 14-year-old person to his throne, to him. And the account continues. God hears every prayer. God cares for every person. Indeed, one might wonder why Adrian chose to stop at that particular desk and pray for that particular boy. After all, he didn't stop at every desk or pray for every child in the class. Perhaps God really wanted someone to pray for that particular boy, yearned for that boy to be lifted to his throne and worked through Adrian to bring it about. Taking Zephaniah's picture of the God who wants to dance with shouts of joy over us, God invites us to join him in that dance. Whoever you are, whatever your status or circumstance, you can join the dance by, by simply praying for someone, for the people around you, however briefly and however well they're known to you, people who are just part of your every day, even if they're partially concealed to you behind a face covering, they're known to God. We are living in exceptional times. Some of us have been and will be facing up to challenges and opportunities we did not foresee only a few weeks or months ago. We will be alongside others facing up to new situations in their personal circumstances. Hear the word of God through the prophet Zephaniah. Do not fear, Zion. Do not let your hands hang limp. The Lord your God is with you, the mighty warrior who saves. Last week we, we heard what puts a smile on the face of God. And this week we have heard in the words of the prophet what causes God to dance. I continue from Zephaniah. He, that is God, will take great delight in you. 
In his love, he will no longer rebuke you, but will rejoice over you with singing. He will dance with shouts of joy over you. So, if I may paraphrase Zephaniah, join the dance, or as they might say, keep dancing. Let us pray. We praise you, O God, for life. In every green and growing thing, in every swimming, creeping, running, flying creature, in every human being, newborn into the world, in every beating heart and active limb, in breath and movement, brain and thought, we praise you, O God, for life. We praise you, O God, for beauty, shining in the light of sun and, and colour of flower, dancing in leaf and sea and skimming bird, singing in wind and stream and human music, laughing in poem and speech, shouting in storm and mountain, silent in stars and smiles and falling snow. Yes, we praise you, O God, for beauty. We praise you, O God, for love, your love for us and, and our frail love for you, the love of man and woman, adult and child, the love of neighbours, colleagues, friends, the love of strangers, crossing divides, the love which binds the world, heals wounds, cheers sorrows and restores lost hopes. Yes, we praise you, O God, for love. So even though, like so much else, we bring our weekly tithes and offerings differently in these circumstances, nevertheless, it is in thanksgiving we commit our offerings with ourselves in your service. And so we continue to pray for, for wise witness in, in a, a post-pandemic wasteland as the poet has described it recently. Lord of, of softly spoken truth, we hear the volume of life steadily rising. Redeeming Father, you so love this world that you gave your one and only Son so that anyone who believes in him need not perish but can receive eternal life. Right now this world needs to know your love so much. In our worlds of family, friends, neighbours and colleagues. So much has, has perished in this post-pandemic wasteland. The loss of loved ones is deeply felt. The loss of certainty and security has exposed new fears. The loss of confidence in just being together has created a cavern of distance between us. It would be so easy to say, I told you so, this is what happens when we ignore God. And you've told us so much that explains the brokenness of the world because of sin, that exposes our individual contribution to that dysfunction in the ways in which we fail to love you and our neighbour as ourselves. And yet, we need to remember in our witness to others that you did not send your son into the world to condemn it, but to save the world through him. So help us in our thoughts and words and deeds, our attitudes and actions, to find the tenor of truth and the tone of grace that is wise and winsome, in welcoming the hurting to find healing, the weary to find rest, the fearful to find peace in Jesus, in whose name we pray. Amen.
So let the dance continue. The Lord who called us together is sending us out to turn words into deeds, worship into service, and vision into reality. Together we have celebrated the faith. Now let us share it. And so may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with us and with those whom we love wherever they are, this day and forevermore. Amen.